Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm Professor John R. and I'm your instructor. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make bicolored metal sheet using the rolling mill. Now, to do this, you're going to need the following items. First, you'll need some thin gauge copper sheet metal. This should be between 24 and 28 gauge. Next, you'll need a piece of silver sheet metal. Now this is sterling silver sheet and it could be anywhere between 22 to say 20 gauge or 18 gauge in thickness. What you'll do is you're going to melt solder on one surface of the silver. In other words, you're going to be sweat soldering. And after that solder is melted, you'll then put the silver item on top of the copper, like so, and reheat it so that the two layers become joined together. What you'll end up with is a piece of metal that's copper on one side and silver on the other. Now using a technique that we've demonstrated in a previous video on saltwater etching, you're going to etch away part of the copper to expose a layer of silver in between detail. Now to do this you're going to need some enamel paint and what you'll do is, using a brush, you're going to completely paint out the back side or paint over the silver side and paint around the edges of the piece. Then what you can do is apply a pattern to the top surface using the paint. Now in this instance, what I've done is I've created an OG pattern. And if you'd like to create a similar pattern, what you'll need to do is create a grid on the top surface of the metal. Then, fill each of the squares of the grid with a circle. You can do this with templates. And then, starting at the center, what you will do is snake between the circles like this. So this is the start of the OG pattern. It's something that's very familiar if you know 60s design. So you're just going to create the mirror around the opposite line of circles and then just continue this towards the end of the item. Now you've noticed that I've added a little bit of detail. What I did is I simulated the same shape in the center and then I just surrounded it with a line to give it a little bit more detail. Once the item is etched and that you've exposed the silver through the copper, you're ready to run it through the rolling mill. Now, what you need to do is you're going to open up the rollers of the rolling mill. These move in a parallel pattern, so they're coming straight up and going straight down. And what you want to do is open them up and insert your piece of metal so that you can then close the rollers exactly to the thickness of the metal. What I like to do is use these top dials by setting them to zero so that I can record exactly where that location is. Then I open the rollers to take out the metal and turn it exactly back to the zero point to get it to that location one more time. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down the rollers just a little bit and then I'm going to roll the pattern in all four directions so that I don't distort it very much and I bring the copper and silver levels up to the same plane. Just like this. Always start with the handle in the top position because it's easier to push than it is to try to pull something up where you might strain your back. So I'm going to bring my piece of copper forward and roll it through the machine on its first pass you'll need to run your piece through the rolling mill at least four times, turning it every time so that you stretch it evenly and in all directions. Remember you're trying to make the surface smooth and all on the same plane. Now I'm not giving you exact instructions on how to manipulate the roller settings because every piece is going to be different. Now we can run the piece through the mill multiple times without a problem because we're only decreasing the distance between the rollers in very small increments and our piece is really well annealed because it's been sweat soldered. Okay, and with that final roll, 
you can see where the material is now all one surface. And this is great because what it does is it enables you to use this piece of metal as an element that you can either treat as a stone by doming it in a dapping block or maybe cutting into it and soldering it around a piece to add extra interest to the surface area. I hope you have fun creating bicolored metal with the rolling mill. Check out our other videos and products on the onlinejewelryacademy.com. Thanks for watching.